Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Training Lab. I've got a General Motors rear-wheel drive clutch release bearing and a matching fork. There's only one way to install this bearing correctly on the fork, but it can be done several different ways. Only one is correct. When it's done incorrect, we're going to have clutch release problems. People are going to say that it releases all the way down to the floorboard and it engages, starts to transmit power. As soon as I even lift my foot up a little bit, our tech calls People are asking for taller clutch release bearings or longer adjustable push rods. They're looking for solutions. One of the first things we need to ask, did you install the bearing on the fork correctly? I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you what happens when you do it wrong. And we're also going to take a look at front bearing retainers or guide tubes. This is the part that the clutch release bearing slides on and it plays a critical role in how the clutch feels and how well it works. So let's install this bearing correctly on the fork and we'll take a good close look at all these problem parts right here on the table. Now this is the incorrect way to install the fork. Notice the spring tabs are behind the rear flange. That just causes the fork to have that quarter inch air gap that I demonstrated. It causes no release. The correct way, spring tabs go underneath the rear flange. Fork is in direct contact with the bearing we get clutch release. Another way it's been done wrong, one in, one out. We've got half the fork installed correctly and half the fork installed incorrectly. Now how can you tell if the fork was installed incorrectly on the bearing? Even after trying to drive the vehicle for just a short time, those spring tabs will leave a witness mark on the back of the bearing. Here we've got two marks 180 degrees apart. Just takes a little time driving, trying to drive that car or truck, and those fork springs dig in and leave marks. All of these bearings were installed incorrectly. Each of them has witness marks. Here we've got a very, very worn out GM fork and pivot. When this pivot and fork are together, they're so worn out, they literally just lock into each other. There is no pivoting action anymore. This needs to be replaced to restore the correct function and feel of this clutch release system. This fork has a lot of miles on it. You can see where the fork was pushing on the back of the bearing, doing its normal job. But finally, everything got so worn out that the fork started to push on the rotating race of the bearing. So as this is trying to turn, the fork is touching it on the back side and acting as a brake upon the fork. So now this hardened bearing rubs against the diaphragm spring or the levers of that clutch and just causes tremendous noise and completely ruins the system. So this fork is worn out, absolutely needs to be replaced. You can tell from the deep gouges right here. Now we've got three examples of worn out guide tubes or front bearing retainers. Here we've got damage on this one. In this case, it looks like the bearing might have spun on there finally. This one's got some deep scratches in it, some gouging out here. This one has the classic wear pattern. The bearing moves in an arc from the fork. So as the bearing moves in an arc, it's always pressing against the side of this guide tube, kind of side loading it as it wears. The guide tube has to take that arc motion in the bearing and straighten it out, move it in a straight line. So there seems to be wear right here and right here on this particular one. We've got a ridge right here. We've got a kind of a low spot or a valley here and here. You could measure the original size back here and compare it out here. You could actually see how much it wore. But to prevent this, we need to make sure that when you install the clutch release bearing, that this groove down here in the center of the bearing is greased with high temperature wheel bearing grease and that it slides nice and free on the front of the transmission. You do not want to have this cocking and binding. It'll lock on here, become very, very hard to press the clutch pedal, very uncomfortable and wear out the clutch prematurely. So please inspect the guide tubes, front bearing retainers for wear. They're worn, they'll need to be replaced. Now if you notice, the bearing appears to be off center from the center of the bearing carrier or sleeve. It is right now, but this is a feature designed into the bearing. It's called self-aligning. Self-aligning allows the bearing race to move relative to the transmission guide tube and center the bearing directly on the clutch. This allows the bearing to run cooler, last longer. So if you see a bearing that's off center, don't worry about it. It's called self-aligning. 
You cannot predetermine where the bearing should be during the installation process, just install it. As soon as you start the engine and push on the clutch pedal with the engine running, the clutch will reposition the bearing, put it in the sweet spot, bearing will run a lot cooler, grease will last a lot longer. Self-aligning clutch release bearing. Sometimes you'll notice when you install a bearing on a fork that there's a cam that seems to be getting in the way. Here it is, right here. It's a little lobe on the bearing sleeve right there. It's merely there to prevent this bearing sleeve from spinning. It only goes so far and then it'll stop spinning, lock up on the fork. We don't want this to spin on the guide tube under any circumstances. That'll just cause wear of expensive parts. So this cam prevents that rotation. This is the current version. There have been some older parts out there that use a pin, as you can see right there, to prevent the, the bearing sleeve from rotating on the guide tube. Well, now you've seen the correct way to install that bearing on the fork and just how critical that relationship is. We have to do it right every time. This one's for an S10. You can see we've got a different style fork, but we've got the same relationship and the same potential to make a mistake. Spring tabs are on the back side here. Now, if you thought GM was the only place this could happen, this bearing belongs to a Ford Mustang. You can put it wrong on that fork also. We don't see it as commonly, but it can be done. If you have any questions about a clutch installation, hydraulic system, flywheel, please call Perfection's tech support line at 800-258-8312. Press 4 and your call will be routed to Tony, Steve, Bobby, or myself. We'll be glad to take your call and help you out.